Hello and welcome to this month's webcast in which I'm going to be talking about My Name is Why by Lam Sissi. Um, this was the October pick for Emily's Walking Book Club and I picked it in part because it's a fascinating and very damning really testament of Black British history and I think a really important one for for everyone to read. It's a really tough book to read. Um, it's upsetting, it's, you know, especially I know a lot of us read late at night before we go to sleep. It's, it's one that slightly haunts you through the night. Um, and I, if you have children, I think in the morning will make you want to give them a massive hug. <laughs> I was tempted when I was reading it, I was tempted sometimes to kind of wake them up in the middle of the night and give them a cuddle. It's, for those of you who don't know much about this book, sorry, I should begin at the beginning. Um, Lem Sisse is an absolutely brilliant black British poet. Um, he's also very much a figure in the British literary scene now. He's um, a Booker Prize judge. He's he's popping up on TV shows all the time. Um, and you can see him on the back cover there. This is about his childhood spent in care um, at the time when racism in Britain was, you know, even more rife than it is today. Um, and it is a real indictment of the care system. Um, Lem Sisse has said numerous times that he felt that care, the word care and being in care is a, a one word oxymoron. Um, interestingly, I actually, I was so struck by this and taken by this idea, I, I looked up the word care and I looked up its etymology and I was intrigued to learn that, you know, we think of care as meaning, you know, to care for something is a kind of loving, affectionate term. It's meaning before that, way before that, it's, it's sort of, if you take it right back to its root, the, the Proto-Indo-European, I think is the term, root of it is gar, which actually means lament and, and cry out. Um, so really, I don't know if he's correct in saying that care, being in care is a, an oxymoron. It's, it's upsettingly, the idea of being in care really takes the, and the way it's portrayed is a kind of cry for help. It's, it's a lament, it's a, a crying out, a, a grieving for this, this awful system. Um, so perhaps it's better to say that in care, you know, it reveals a, a different inflection of the word care, one that we, we don't often think of now. And that meaning, that sort of loving meaning like of caring for something didn't appear until the, I think it was the 1500s, you know, much, much later than this, this very kind of uh root of, of crying out. So anyway, I've got straight into the language there. Um, this book is wonderful. It, it's a it's a tough one to read, as I say, but I think the sadness and the toughness and the the kind of visceral misery of what it is to grow up really without a family and feeling so alone and so passed about within the system is countered by Lem's amazing resilience and positivity and you feel from the very start that he was just a positive force. Um, one thing that we all noted in our experience of reading the book is that it's, it's written in this unusual kind of composite collage way. I'm just going to try and show you this on the screen. So each chapter, here's chapter one, begins with a poem. And these poems, we all in the book club absolutely looked forward to and relished and cherished every, every word, really. He writes such simple language, but it rings so true, it's so deep. It's, they're like these kind of crystals of, of perfection. Um, you know, I don't read much poetry. I often find it a bit of a struggle to slow my reading down to give each word sufficient weight in my head. But these short poems, you know, it's sort of about four lines. 
I think it's four lines every time. I'm just going to check that now. Um, yeah, the sort of four lines at the beginning. It was just such a great start. Um, I'll just read you one. It opens at random here, almost chapter 10. Well, I don't think it's a random because I must have, not, you know, bent this page back because it, it's such a good one. Secrets of the stones that sink the boat. Take them out, look at them, throw them out and float. You know, almost all the words there are, are one syllable and the rhyme of boat and float is so, it's almost childlike, but it's, it's so true, you know, you secrets do sink us and we need to throw them out. So, so the chapters begin, as I was saying, the chapters begin with um, this, these little um, bits of poem, four, four lines. And then we go into Lem's sort of first person narrative as he's narrating the experience of going through his files of his childhood which he spent you know, decades trying to get hold of. So you really feel like you're by his side. He, he begins, he's saying, I'll start by simply recording my reactions to the first early documents and we'll see how this unfolds. You feel like you're with him. You don't know where this is going. It's quite exciting in a way. And then you get these, um, these documents. These are some of the early ones. Um, later on, it's often um, typewritten this very close written click clack typewriter um which feels like such a contrast to these sort of open um very simple profound poems um so these are the three main strands really the the poems the being with lem and in his memories and his voice and then the the typewriter the typewritten reports his files which are, are usually written by his um Oh, what's the word? Uh, care officer, social worker, that's what I want to say. Um, occasionally, he also includes online testaments from that he's found on the internet of people who've also suffered these um, these places. So there's some about the, um, the I think it was Wood Green, the, the sort of awful, the, the worst care institution in which he was placed. And some some other online testaments almost to kind of collaborate with or not collaborate to corroborate what he um what he's saying um so it's a really unusual style it's a it's a sort of strange thing to read you don't get totally immersed in this um you know standard history book it's you know here are the sources here are the impressions here's a poem um but we love this. We love this contrast. We love this mix. And, you know, I think all those different strands really work to show, to show each other up, up in a way. You know, the, the poems felt all the more special for being near the typewritten reports. The typewritten reports felt all the more kind of terrible but fascinating as you were comparing them to Lem's own recollections. Um, so, yeah. First thing to say, well, second thing, first thing to say, care has this sort of strange old meaning. Second thing to say, um, there's this unusual structure of the book. Um, one thing that this book is really about is memory. There's a, so much in it about memory. And in our discussion, we talked a lot about how, um, how memories are made, how they evolve over time. Um, Oh, and there's a, a passage that I'm going to read out here. Um, where Lem writes about mem memories and care. He says that memories and care are slippery because there's no one to recall them with as the years pass. In a few months, I would be in a different home with a different set of people who had no idea of this moment. How could it matter? if no one recalls it. Given that staff don't take photographs, it was impossible to take something away as a memory. This is how you become invisible. It isn't the lack of photographs that erodes the memory. It is the underlying unkindnesses which make you feel as though you don't matter enough. This is how to quietly deplete the sense of self-worth deep inside a child's psyche. 
This is how a child becomes hidden in plain sight. Family is just a set of memories disputed, resolved or recalled between one group of people over a lifetime, isn't it? And if there is no one to care enough to dispute, resolve or recall the memory, then did it happen? So, you know, it's absolutely fascinating thinking about memories like this. Do we need other people to keep memories alive? Do we need photographs? Is, is there a, a sort of dissonance between a photograph and how you remember something? Or do, you, other, do different people remember things the same or differently? Yeah, as you can imagine, it led to such a great discussion. And, um, you know, I still really think about that. You know, it stayed with me, that idea of, of memories and a memoir and, and how, how we record the past, how we bring it back to the surface of our, of our minds. So there's lots to talk about here. Um, we also, of course, talked about names and, and the power of names and, and naming something, renaming something. Um, we talked about childhood and what, what this book has made us feel is needed in childhood and, and what the system can't give. Um, it was a really good discussion and um, I'm so glad that this was the book that we were talking about um, when we got approached by the BBC to be filmed. So um, this is what we're talking about on BBC's Inside Culture. Um, you can check us out um, if you just search for BBC Inside Culture. It's the episode, in fact, it's airing tonight for the first time, the 15th of October, I think it is. Um, and it goes out at 7.30 p.m. It's a special episode all about reading. So I'm looking forward to seeing how how we come across on on screen all together walking across the heath talking about this brilliant book um have you read it i'd love to know what you think um have you read other of lem Sisse's poems have you seen him talk or perform he seems like such an inspiring man it's such a phenomenal book um i really urge you to read it and i'd love to know what you think of it if you have read it thanks very much